Hello, it's Saturday the 17th of September and this is The Big Magazine. Now I'm here with you at this time every weekend to take a look at what's going on around our area of Birmingham, Solihull, the Black Country and beyond. Yes, hello again and welcome to The Big Magazine. Now coming up, all the usual features. We're going to take our regular look at what's up on this week's community notice board very shortly. Des and Gary will tell us what's on for this weekend. Johnny Doom will give us his pick of the gigs. Carl is here with his look at the film news. And we'll look at the, uh, some of the interesting things going on in our area as well. Then after all that, I'll have a look to see how you've been connecting with Big Centre as well this week. Plenty more too, so that's all coming up within the pages of The Big Centre magazine. Let's have a look what is happening in our area as we turn our attention to the community notice board. Yes, of course. Now, if you have some local news or information that you'd like us to mention, then please do get in touch. But as always, as we always say, give us plenty of notice. Yes, and if you do want to get in touch, then as always, we'll tell you how you can in a few minutes' time. Mm. Now, Robert Hazel at Tipton Library has been in touch uh, to tell us about a photographic competition called What Tipton Means to Me. Well, then what it means to me is that I come from there, you see. Oh! It yes. means a lot to you then. Mm, you're not so far away yourself, are you? No. Okay. <laughs> now, this one is dedicated to the memory of John Whitehouse, who used to look after the canal locks in Tipton. The winner will be awarded £75 plus the John Whitehouse Memorial Medal, and second prize is £25. They're looking to award the prizes to the best original photographs that you show your favourite scene in Tipton. Yeah, now the competition is being run by Tipton Civic Society, Tipton Community Association and Samwell Council. It launches on the 17th of September and the closing date is the 6th of January. So if you'd like an entry form, you can pick one up from any Tipton library or you can email robert underscore hazel at sanwell.gov.uk thanks yeah. robert thank you robert <laughs> now the 2016 countryside alliance awards nicknamed the rural oscars are now open to uh, public nomination at www.countryside-alliance.org this sounds interesting mm, mm. It is. now the rural oscars recognize hard-working rural businessmen and women <laughs> That's important. And those who, who routinely go the extra mile for their community or to help preserve and protect rural life. The awards have become the definitive rural award to win because they celebrate the characters behind the business and the efforts they go to, not just the business itself. Yeah. Now, these awards are now in their 12th year, and last year they received over 4,500 nominations from the public. Nominations are open until 4th of November this year, then a list of finalists will be drawn up by the judges and judging visits will take place. The finalists will be invited to a reception of the House of Lords earlier in the new year. Yeah, and then the winners will be announced. The awards invite nominations across four categories. You have local food and drink, village shop, post office, tourism enterprise, and the newest category, farm enterprise. Yeah, nominations can be made in more than one category. Previous nominees are welcome to uh, get involved, and nominations can be made, as we said, at the website, which is www.countryside-alliance.org.uk until Friday the 4th of November. On a similar theme, mm. <laughs> the Wildlife Trusts have published a new guide which highlights the vital importance of local wildlife sites across the UK. These places are havens for some of our rarest habitats and species. Now, according to the Wildlife Trust's guide, in Birmingham and the Black Country, we have 644 local wildlife sites covering 4,599 hectares, more than 7% of the land in the region in total. Now, this is land that has been identified as very important for wild plants and animals. But these places don't always benefit from the recognition needed to ensure the protection and the right kind of care. Unlike sites of special scientific interest, local wildlife sites are not protected by law and do not benefit from national recognition of their wildlife importance. 
The wildlife trusts believe that this makes them vulnerable to neglect, mismanagement and the huge pressure for development across the country. We have to look after the wildlife, don't we? Yes, we do. So, for a copy of this new local wildlife sites guide, or to find out more about the wildlife trusts for Birmingham and the Black Country, have a look at their website, which is www.wildlifetrusts.org. That was an easy one. It was, actually. We get some right websites. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job they're on the screen. Now, arts groups and organisations in Aston and Newtown can apply for grants from a £500,000 funding pot following the closure of the Drum in Aston. It's very sad because the Drum's a great place. Mm, yeah. We've been there a few times. Now, Birmingham City Council have worked with Arts Council England and local stakeholders to identify priorities for cultural development in both areas and agree match funding. Yeah, now the grants are split into two streams. The first is to develop engagement in the arts through activities for young people and for older people, co designed with the community. Newly formed groups will be able to apply for grants of two to four thousand pounds, while established organisations can bid for funding between twenty and a hundred thousand pounds. That's a lot of money. It certainly is. The second stream is to develop opportunities for black and minority ethnic creative entrepreneurs and producers. This will be this will be through the award of £125,000 to an established organisation or consortium to support local groups in developing their skills and networks and a further 25000 award for helping them grow capacity for the future. Yeah, it's well worth applying. And applications close on the 10th of October, that's next month. And for more information, you can go to the Birmingham Culture website, which is birminghamculture, or one word, dot org. And you'd look out for the section called Culture on Our Doorstep. Sounds like a great cause. It does. And finally, just a quick reminder of something we mentioned last week. It's Tipton Library's local history day, next Saturday, the 24th. Remember? Lee's birthday. My birthday. <laughs> <laughs> During the day, there will be a talk about Midland beauty spots by local historian Ian Bott, as well as acclaimed magnum photographer Martin Parr's Black Country Photos exhibition. Yes, visitors will get the chance to read through unseen Tipton Herald newspapers from yesteryear and watch some local history film shows, as well as enjoying homemade cakes and coffee. Also on the same day, calling Black Country Brides. <laughs> Bring in your wedding photos, share your memories and have your photo taken on the wedding bandstand. Wedding photographs, old and new, are just the ticket for Tipton Library's latest project. I must tell my mum and dad about that. You see, they're appealing for brides past and present to take their wedding photographs along and have them copied for a future exhibition next February around Valentine's Day. The bandstand in the library will be themed as a wedding pagoda. I was going to say propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, different. no, not wedding propaganda. <laughs> it will be themed as a wedding pagoda. And as we said, couples who bring in their photos can have their photo taken on the bandstand as well. That will look really nice, yeah. yeah. Now, the local history day will be dedicated to Don and Isabel Beebe from the British Legion Tipton branch to celebrate all the hard work they do for the poppy appeal. So it's all on at the Tipton Library for the local History Day on Saturday, the 24th of September. It's birthday. <laughs> so there you go. That's what we found pinned to this week's community notice board. Have you been sitting there hoping that we'd mention something or do you know of something coming up soon that we ought to be talking about? I have something. Do you? Yes. Oh, uh, We tell need me. to let all the viewers know that I'm not going to be here for a few weeks. <gasps> Why not? Um, because we're going away for filming, mm. but it's all to do with a really exciting big centre project, so when I'm well, back we'll have more information on that. In true Blue Peter style, you are on a filming expedition. Yes. Expedition. Oh, I always wanted to do a Blue Peter expedition. You borrow me badge. <laughs> <laughs> Need to get a big centre blue badge. That's not a bad idea, actually. <laughs> Take a mug with you. Okay, yes. Okay. You've got to have a cup of tea while you're away. Yes. Or whatever, you know, you yes. like to drink. <laughs> now, if you want to get in touch with us about something, do, but please make sure you let us know in plenty of time. So how do you get in touch? Well, there are many ways, but your best bet is to email us via the post bag. That's hello. Hello. At bigcentre.tv, or if social media is your thing, then you can look us up and send us a message at Big Centre TV. Or you can put a letter in the post. And where do you send it to? The Community Notice Board, uh, Big Centre, 14A, Low Hall Lane, Walsall, WS1, 1RL. And we'll have more for you at the same time next week. Well, well I will. Lee will. Yeah. Have a nice time. Thank you.
Right then, we're going to take a break now. When we come back, Des and Gary will take a look at what's on today. Then Carl will be here with his regular look at the silver screen. I'll see you in a few minutes. Welcome back to The Big Magazine with me, Lee Bannister. Now, Carl will be here shortly with his look at what's what in the film charts this week. But first, it's time for Des and Gary to tell us what's on for Saturday. Now, today and tomorrow, Digbeth Dining Club will be hosting <coughs> the British Street Food Awards right here in Birmingham, launched in 2012 by Jack Brabant. Remember? Yes, uh, in project. fact, he was on what's on, one of our first ones. Uh, it was originally termed as Gorilla Dining uh, and started in London, having been imported from the States in 2009. The, straight, the name Street Food was then adopted and it's just grown and grown in popularity and now can be found at most outdoor events. And it's really good as well. There's some crap. So a lot stuff. of it is, it, it is good. I'm, I must admit, I've been to a couple, not, not the one that Jack runs, but elsewhere, and you have to be careful. <laughs> Uh, that's all I'm saying. Right. But but I know that they, what they're doing dig with what Jack does is is superb, absolutely brilliant. Well, he, he told me they, they vet them really. Oh really yeah, they, they do. They, and and it's, it's just one or two that, if you like, on, on the outskirts, yeah. or, uh, can be a bit mm. uh, a, a bit iffy. Uh, but it was from a burger van on the way to a football match. Oh, boom. Well, so, well. <laughs> 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 now, the competition itself will feature 20 of the nation's best street food traders in one outdoor arena at the Rainbow in Digworth. Uh, Café Moore are coming from Wales, Le Belle are coming from Hackney, Shoot the Bull from Hull, <laughs> and many, many more. It will be, without doubt, the biggest street food event to be held in this city. Mm. Well done, Jack. Yeah. Brilliant. Good, Good stuff, man. mate. And less than five minutes' walk from Grand Central Station in the studio on Cannon Street, the Midlands Whiskey Festival is set celebrating its 10th anniversary. Okay. I don't like, I'm not a whiskey person, no. so I don't... Right. Well, whiskey fans and producers from across the world will be attending the show for the biggest tasting experience yet. Uh, there's, there's master classes, food pairings... See, I can't... Food and whiskey, I don't really... I don't, don't really do it for me. But know. whiskey cocktails and intimate tasting sessions will be available throughout the show, <laughs> and you'll receive a branded festival glass, a brochure, Ooh. and a dream dram token wow. exchangeable for a sample of one of the many premium whiskies available to taste. Yeah. Okay. yeah, enjoy that. I know lots of people that love the whiskies, and, and, mm. and, and it's a passion for some Highland people. Park. I love Highland Park. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I, th I think, is Jack Daniels a whiskey? Is that no, a... it's a bourbon. Oh, okay. I don't mind a Jack Daniels. But... Mm. Okay. Now, over in Telford, the World Heritage River Festival is celebrating the 30th anniversary of the uh, Iron Bridge Gorge becoming a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Oh, is it really? That's good. Yeah. Good little place, that. Yeah. The festival will culminate with a magical river procession finale featuring illuminated boats, music performers and pyrotechnics put on by outdoor arts experts Walk the Plank. Now, most of the activity during the day of the festival will take place at Dale End Park and will feature arts and crafts, music, dance and street theatre, heritage crafts, walks and talks, fun fair markets, food and drink and more. And there will also be carriage rides, a steam engine, street entertainment and live music, food and entertainment put on by the Wharfage businesses. Is that it? <laughs> Blimey. <laughs> That's a busy one. It is. Uh, gigs tonight and a uh, good friend of mine, Bev Bevan's Zing Band, are at the Core Theatre in Solihull. He was on my Life Stories the other week. Mm -hmm. Great stories he told. Good. Asher Bosley. Now... Asher, brimful of Asher. Do you remember that track, brimful yeah, of Asher? Yeah, by, by the Indian guys. Yeah, brimful well, of Asher Asher Bosley do, do, do. was, that was what, who it was written about. Okay. And she's uh, at the Genting Arena. She's a, a massive, massive icon. Right. Uh, the Electric Swing Circus play the Bull's Head in Digbeth. These are really good. And here's a very sassy Valentine. Avec moi. Mon ami, prends ma femme, mon corps, on t'y 
And of course, Des and Gary will be here at the same time tomorrow with their unique take on what's on for Sunday. Plus, of course, they'll be here with a look at the week ahead tomorrow night at 7. And again, every day of the week during big news. So then, time for a look at this week's new film releases as well as the movie chart. It's time for today's big centre, big picture, bite size. Here's Carl Jones. Thanks very much, Lee. Well, it's now time to have a look at what's happening at West Midlands cinemas. And there's no doubting the film that everybody's been talking about this weekend. That's the return of Bridget Jones. In the film that's called Bridget Jones's Baby, this accident-prone hero is wrestling with troubles of being a woman in her 40s, not to mention being pregnant with a couple of options of who the father actually is. Here's a look at some classic Bridget-isms through the eyes of the star players, Renee Zellweger, Colin Firth and Patrick Dempsey. I'm looking for someone dynamic to lead any volunteers. Do you need the bathroom, Bridget? <laughs> Bridget always seems to me the most wonderful paradox between utter hopelessness and incredible competence. Her optimism and her determination to succeed in spite of her failings is inspiring. I'm pregnant. I have going to have a baby. <laughs> Everything is completely under control. She's not a loser. She's still funny. And she's not just a stooge either. She's witty. So you have no idea which of us is actually the father? No, it's all very confusing. She's not perfect and she doesn't intend to be, but she's, you know, trying to find her way. They're both equally likely. So do bring along the father if you can work out which one he is. Renee is better at being Bridget than uh, I can imagine anyone being, because she's got the capacity to act that slightly scatty thing, which she isn't at all, actually. There's a clownishness to her. All the um, potential for humiliation, which is always lurking, she still plows on. <laughs> Awkward comedy is my favorite, on screen and off. It comes really naturally to me. I enjoy it, especially when Sharon is around the corner laughing and uh, shouting out how I make it more clumsy. We work on that a lot. Just how far we can go with how klutzy or dysfunctional she is. But most of these th things that she does are based on somebody we know's life. It blows my mind. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this has been worth coming back just to see her do all that. Renee is Bridget Jones. She plays it in a very sympathetic way because I think that kindness oozes out of her. She's definitely the right person for it, and it couldn't have happened without her this time. So there you go, that's been the big hit at West Midlands Cinemas this weekend. But if you don't fancy that one, what else is on offer? Well, the current top five going into the weekend looked a bit like this. At number five, we had the remake of Ben-Hur with Jack Houston and Morgan Freeman. Not quite as epic as the Charlton Heston version, I think it's fair to say. At number four, the latest action-packed animation, that's Kubo and the Two Strings. At three, Mila Kunis feeling rebellious in crazy comedy Bad Mums by the makers of The Hangover, that one. And at two, nerve-jangling crime tale Don't Breathe. Which means that, have you guessed it, at number one for a second successive week, it's that foul-mouthed animation Sausage Party. A cartoon for sure, but not one to take the kids along to see. Now, next week, we finally get a chance to see what Glenn Close, Gemma Arterton and Paddy Considine were doing when they were up in Dudley last summer with the release of sci-fi thriller The Girl With All The Gifts. And I'm delighted to say that on my other show, The Week With Carl Jones, I'll be bringing you a special 20-minute look behind the scenes during that shoot in the West Midlands. That premieres this coming Friday. Meanwhile, though, here's Gemma Arterton on location, talking about the character she plays in the film. I play Helen Justineau who is a, I guess you would say, the teacher for the, for the kids, uh, for the hungry kids. And, um, and she's brought in uh, to, to educate them, but also as part of the kind of the programme to try and find out how to cure, uh, to, to find a cure. So plenty more, as I say, where that came from next week. Don't forget, if you're a local movie maker or you're involved in any kind of filmmaking ventures with links to the West Midlands, I'd love to hear from you. Email me at movies at bigcentre.tv or contact us online and through Facebook. Thanks, Carl. And, of course, there's more from Carl every day of the week in the Big Picture Bite Size. And, of course, you can see a number of editions of the Big Picture on our online catch-up service at www.bigcentre.tv.
Right, time for a break now. When we come back, Johnny Doom will give us his pick of the gigs. I'll see you in a few minutes. Welcome back to Saturday's Big Magazine with me, Lee Bannister. Now, coming up next, I think it's time to head over to meet Johnny Doom from Amped as he gives us his pick of the upcoming gigs. Right, it's me, Johnny Doom, from your weekly rock show on Big Centre TV, Amped. Uh, you can see it at 10 on Wednesday, uh, Friday 11.30 and 10 on Saturday. Uh, here's my pick of the gigs, anyway. Uh, McFly, they're going to be at the O2 Academy from the 21st to the 23rd. Uh, of Mice and Men, if you want something heavy, that's 30th of September at the O2 Academy. Uh, and Feeder are back. Yeah, they've got a new album. And, uh, well, they're playing at the O2 Institute on the 4th of October. Uh, here they are with a brand new track. This is called Eskimo. This is feelings that And thanks to Johnny Doom there. As he said, he'll be back with Amped on Wednesday and Saturday nights at 10, plus Friday nights at half 11. 
The Commonwealth War Graves Commission is encouraging people to visit their local war graves and discover the stories behind the names of those who gave their lives in the First World War. The aim is to encourage community groups to discover, explore and remember their local war heritage. The BBC presenter, Nick Owen, is the ambassador for the War Graves Commission's Living Memory Project in the Midlands. So why do you think, Nick, it's important that people should get involved with uh, war graves in their locality? I think it, it's really important for people to have a sense of history, to have a sense of what went before them in comparatively recent years. You know, ancient history is a long time ago, but we're talking about something in living memory. Many of us around today know people or related to people who actually took part in the First and Second World Wars. I am fortunate in that sense that my grandfather was at Somme and I, I you know, spoke to him. My father was in the Second World War at Dunkirk, for instance, and I have that sort of wonderful direct link um, ab about events at that uh, tumultuous time in world history. And I think it's so important that people find out as much as they can, especially locally, to know that people from round here gave their lives. Young people, really young, you know, 17 and 18 years old, went off and died at such a terribly, terribly young age. Uh, and some of that history is in these cemeteries, local cemeteries. Thousands of people every year visit the war graves across the world, and particularly those in France and Belgium on the Western Front. But fewer people realise that there are more than 24,000 war graves and memorials in this country. Many of those buried here succumbed to their wounds when they were repatriated home to war hospitals and convalescent homes across the West Midlands, and many also died in a dreadful flu epidemic in 1919. A startling statistic is that everyone in the UK has at least one war grave within three miles of their own front doors. The Commonwealth War Graves Commission would like people to sign up to the project and take part, and you can find out where your nearest war graves are located via their website. This is Norman Bartlam at Warstone Lane Cemetery in Birmingham for Big News. The world's most famous train, the Flying Scotsman, steamed into Birmingham for this weekend's Birmingham Heritage Festival, being held at the Tysley Railway Works. As I discovered, the train has got connections with Birmingham. During the Flying Scotsman's most recent uh, £4.2 million overhaul, we did quite a lot of the work here. Uh, on the Scotsman and be behind, quietly behind the scenes. A lot of the motion that you see behind me, the rods connected to the, to the wheels, and the wheels themselves were overhauled here at Tysley. Um, so as a thank you, the National Railway Museum uh, allowed us to have it for this weekend. We were very lucky because uh, the loco was available during the same week that Birmingham Heritage Week was going on, so we were able to combine the two. Hence, we have Flying Scotsman here at Tysley for Birmingham Heritage Week. Apart from Thomas the Tank Engine, I think it probably is the most, uh, it's safe to say it's the world's most famous real steam locomotive. It has helped that it shares the same name as a very famous non-stop service train that runs between, uh, runs between King's Cross and Edinburgh and back every day and still runs to this day. Um, so the Flying Scotsman has always caught the public's, uh, always caught the public's imagination. So it's not until you get down here, is it, and you just see the size of this? I mean, look, it's way above our head here. We haven't even got to the Flying Scotsman uh, emblem and logo there. No, absolutely not. Because, of course, when you see these things, you're typically standing on a platform next to them, yeah. and so you only see the top half. Uh, we're, standing next, we're standing down at rail level next to the motion, uh, a lot of which was overhauled at Tysley. And uh, we're also standing next to the wheels, uh, which uh, I'm six foot two, and they're a lot larger than I am. Certainly are. So this is it, this is the cab of the Flying Scotsman and it's something that kids in the 40s, 1940s, 50s and perhaps even up to the early 60s would have really wanted to do and even for adults today it's probably on their bucket list of things that they must do. It's on occasions like this that people get the opportunity but if you do I'll tell you it's really hot in this cab. This is Norman Bartlam for big news on the Flying Scotsman.
So time for another break now. When we come back, we'll be seeing how you've been connecting with us this week. I'll see you in a few minutes. Hello, my name's John Price. I'm pastor of Kingsway Church in Wombourne. Let me just talk to you for a couple of minutes about your face. Faces are totally unique, unless you're a twin. No one else has got your face. Your face sets you apart from everybody else. You're recognized by your, your, your facial features. And of course your face contains some of the most important faculties that you possess. Two eyes for seeing, two ears for hearing, a mouth for speaking, singing, shouting, eating, kissing, and a nose. When you socially interact with people, it's your face people look at. It's face to face, it's never feet to feet. And when you're in love, you gaze into your lover's eyes. They're the window of the soul, somebody once said. I remember when my kids were just babies. I would hold them close and just nuzzle them with my face. And in response, they would explore my face with their fingers. Faces tell you so much about a person. If they're smiling, they're happy. If they're frowning, they're not happy. If their lips are turned down at the corner, then they're grumpy. If their faces are as red as beetroot, they've either had too much sun or too much to drink, or their team has just lost again. Faces. And when we turn our faces towards people, it says lots of things. When we turn our faces away from people, that also makes a statement. God wants regular face-to-face -face meetings with you as a friend, as a father, to you as his child, as a confidant, an, an advisor, a, a helper, a comforter. In the Old Testament, in the book of Numbers, in chapter 6 and verse 24, we have the great priestly blessing that God commanded Moses to speak over Israel. God just wanted to bless his chosen people. And this blessing did that. The Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. What a great blessing. He wants to gaze on you with love. But he needs you to respond, to reciprocate by turning your face towards him. Thank you. Welcome back to Saturday's Big Magazine with me, Lee Bannister. So then, it's now time to see how you've been connecting with us. I'll be looking at letters, emails and social media messages shortly, but first, we've been out and about around our area getting your opinion of the issues of the day. So on Wednesday, it's Roald Dahl Day. Now, did you ever read any of his books? And if so, which ones were your favourite and why? Yes, I did. Uh, I read some Roald Dahl when I was younger. Uh, a particular favourite of mine was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I love that one. It's got a special place in my heart. I don't know if the Roald Dahl was so well known when I was younger, to be honest. So, I just didn't read them then. That's probably um, Fantastic Mr Fox or Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Why did you like them so much? I really liked, they were kind of a bit gruesome in a way, but they weren't too much. It was just kind of like a nice balance. Uh, from our conversation, I understand that your family are big Roald Dahl fans. So tell me how it started. Um, I think it started when my eldest child was quite young and we bought one of the books for her. And uh, from there it grew and we had a massive library at home. 
Today it's going right, it's doing its rounds around social media. There's going to be a new squirty tea in an aerosol. It's called Liquid Instant Tea. What do you think? What do you, how does it sound to you? Uh, vile. <laughs> so I wouldn't choose it myself anyway, I'll stick with tea bags. Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. Is it something you'd perhaps be interested in buying? Not at all, I don't think so. I don't, I don't even me at all. How dreadful actually, to be honest. It doesn't come across as what you want in the morning when you come up. And are you a big tea drinker? I am indeed, mugs of tea all the time. Terrible. Are you a big tea drinker? Yes. So would you be sticking to the tea bags then? Yes, we have decaffeinated tea anyway. So we'll stick to the normal decaf. Oh no, ah, sorry. Oh no, I like a cup of tea. <laughs> So this week there's an anticipated heat wave coming to the UK. My question to you is, how do you cope in the heat and, and what do you like to do when it's really sunny? Um, actually, I quite like the heat and uh, I think uh, I would do like a barbecue with my friends. I like going outside, I love it there, it makes me happy. Well, I do love the sun, but they say now it's bad for you to have too much, so I try not to have too much sun but it's lovely to enjoy outdoor eating, living, things like that. Well, basically, I love the sunshine, so it's an excuse to get in the garden, get the deck chairs out, the barbecue, and get some tanning oil on. I actually hate the sun, so I'll probably end up spending the time in the bath. I'd rather be over in the North Pole or something, to be quite honest. OK, what is it about the sun that you don't like? I just don't deal with the heat very well. I'm more of a nighttime person. So then, let's move on to some of the messages uh, we've received. Uh, first up, we've got a big congratulations to the winner of our big fish competition that we ran last month. It's Alan Boone. Now, he and a friend are going to be flying out to Canada next week for a five-day, all-expenses-paid trip of a lifetime, fishing on Tobin Lake in Saskatchewan. All thanks to our friends at Fishing in Saskatchewan. And we'll be talking to Alan and his companion later in the week, so do keep an eye out for that. Next, Linda Harper Hucknall has uh, asked us to mention Black Country Theatre's forthcoming performance of The Last Tango in Tipton. Yeah. Now, it's going to be on the 11th and 12th of November at the Comedian Theatre in uh, New Road in Tipton. You can find out more online at www.cateshillpress.com and watch out for it within uh, What's On With Des and Gary nearer to November. Now, you might have seen uh, Life Stories last week where Des Tong spoke with musician Sissy Stone. Now, they've known each other for years and it's a great programme. Erica Jones got in touch to say, looking good both and still rocking it up. Fantastic. And if you want to see it again, then you can watch it on our website at www.bigcentre.tv. Next, Marcus Distant was a guest on Big News a while ago and he's been in touch to let us know about a project he's running. Marcus says, I was just wondering if anyone would like to donate to my Duncan Edwards The Boy Who Had It All Kickstarter campaign. We have currently raised nearly £4,000, so if you'd like to find out more about that then Marcus has posted the details on our Facebook page. Oh, quickly on Twitter, the Black Country Partnership Trust said, Big thanks to Big Centre for covering our annual members event which took place at the Black Country Living Museum. And you can see that report again on our YouTube channel. Thanks, guys. Now, you might remember Norris, the humanoid robot who visited Carl Jones a few weeks ago. Well, Norris has put some behind-the-scenes bits and pieces on YouTube. So if you want to see Norris, the humanoid robot, in all his glory, then follow the link from our Twitter page. <laughs> now elsewhere, as we've been saying, it's Birmingham Heritage Week and Two Towers Brewery tweeted us and More Moorpool Heritage Trust as well. They reckon Birmingham and the Moorpool estate is a great place and after seeing all the events for the Heritage Week, we agree. In fact, Moorpool Heritage Trust themselves tweeted us to say, thanks to Big Centre for your support in spreading the Moorpool word. A great programme to rival the Great British Bake Off. Hmm, possibly. Now, Steve Green is very impressed with the number of name checks Giles Logan from Brum Cinema Addicts squeezed into the second half of his appearance on Carl Jones's show. Yeah, we were impressed as well. So, there you go. If you'd like to get in touch with us, maybe you just want to say hi and get your name on the telly, or perhaps you just want to send someone a nice message on the telly. Maybe it's even somebody's birthday, or, you know, somebody celebrating something, whatever. On social media, here's where we are. Big Centre TV. And you can find us under that name on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Plus, of course, you can email us. Hello, hello, 
at pigcenter.tv. Oh, and don't forget, we do have a couple of other Twitter feeds as well that you can keep in touch with. For sport, you need to follow Big Centre Sport, and for news, you need to follow Big Centre News. Simple as that. Or if you just want to write to us, then the address for anything at all is Big Centre, 14A, Low Hall Lane, Walsall, WS1, 1RL. So then, that's your big magazine for Saturday. Time to close the pages of the magazine again. But remember, you can catch the big magazine on Saturdays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Then we're back with more tomorrow, Sunday, also at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Don't forget, you can catch up with this week's big quiz too. I'll be with you early tomorrow morning between 8 and 9 to gently test the old brain cells with another play of this week's shows. So I hope you can join us then from the whole team here. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later. Try a bit. <laughs>